Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're, we're glad that you were able to uh, spend some of your time with us today. And uh, we'll talk a, a quite a bit about Medicare and get into some details and so forth. But uh, foremost, uh, my, my big takeaway from my last uh, meeting was that, you know, I didn't really kind of let people know that I was a human being. And uh, I wanted to do that this time. Uh, so just want to introduce myself. Uh, you can see on the slide here, I wanted to highlight the most important thing in my life, which is Kelly. And um, the uh, you can see the three pictures there. Uh, and then also uh, the fact that I spent quite a bit of time in the military as well as Kelly did uh, too. So we do live uh, here in Bergheim, right uh, just below uh, just south of Highway 46. And um, we also uh, have three dogs on the property. Two of them belong to us. My parents live with us. They're actually building the house. I can turn out and look out the window right now and see the uh, foundation of their house that's being built. Uh, and we have two goats as well named Brooks and Dunn. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I spent about 25 years in the military. And the majority of that time was spent in the military health system. Um, so uh, I do have a, a pretty significant uh, amount of time spent in the medical environment. Uh, and, and the majority of that time was in the primary care environment. So uh, generally speaking, uh, it was with uh, general practitioners, family practitioners, uh, internists, uh, and some specialists, uh, but for the most part, we're talking family medicine. Uh, my last assignment in the military was a, a commander of an overseas medical squadron. Squadron's just a, a naming convention for an organization in the military. Uh, and uh, Kelly and I had the pleasure of uh, living uh, in Spengdalem, Germany for our last two years in the Air Force. Um, after that, I spent a couple years in the corporate environment um, overseeing clinical operations for a Texas-based uh, medical group that focused on senior care. So almost exclusively of uh, folks that were enrolled uh, in Medicare, uh, whether they were on a supplement Medicare Advantage plan or they had original Medicare. That was the majority of the patients that we saw. So I think based on, on that experience, uh, the, the primary care experience that I had the two years I had uh, with WellMed uh, in the San Antonio and the Dallas market uh, gives me a, a unique uh, qualification to consult on Medicare coverage. So decided to come over uh, early in the spring uh, and actually start focusing on, on selling insurance uh, and then offering uh, as a part of Lesnick company and then offering education on Medicare products uh, as well. So uh, really that that is kind of uh, what my focus is. So today, really my objective is, uh, the bottom line up front is, is to help you select a, pan, a plan that best fits your needs through education. Uh, so this is specifically and 100% an education event without any uh, attachment to any specific carriers or anything. And I, I'm gonna do that by helping you understand the elements of Medicare, uh, understanding the purpose of uh, each of the elements and how uh, you pay for uh, the different elements of Medicare um, because there is some payment uh, and a lot of folks are not aware of that. Also understanding where the gaps exist in coverage and uh, how they can be filled. Uh, and generally those are filled uh, through uh, products that are offered by uh, private uh, health insurance companies. So uh, that's uh, my, my objective today using the educational tool. Uh, so at this point, I am actually going to um, stop my video and then we will focus on the, uh, uh, on the content of the brief. It, it should be about a 30 minute brief. Uh, so 27 more minutes, and then uh, we will have time for uh, Q and A as well. So, so um, the next, let me move that out of the way. Um, 
knowing about Medicare and getting to know Medicare, uh, this briefing is broken down into uh, essentially 10 sections uh, that are highlighted uh, here. Um, it explains what Medicare is, uh, who, who is eligible for it, uh, what it covers, uh, like I mentioned, the costs uh, and, and the gaps. We mentioned the gaps and, and where those exist and so forth and how you can get more, more coverage. And then uh, actually how to do something about it, how do you make a choice about a carrier um, and when can you enroll? Uh, when are the election periods? And, and when can I make changes to my coverage and so forth if I'm not satisfied with my plan? And then we'll wrap up with some cost-saving measures um, and some uh, things that you can engage in to make sure that you're, you're being a good steward of your resources. And then lastly, offer you some uh, resources for where you can go to help. So, so what is Medicare? Um, I'm going to concentrate on what it is, uh, and uh, I think that that's probably the, the most deliberate step to help people understand it. It definitely is uh, the federal government's insurance program for, for eligible citizens, and we'll talk about eligibility in, in, in just a little bit. Uh, it, is, it is funded by the taxes that you paid while you were in the workforce, uh, one portion of it, and then there is another uh, portion of it that is uh, funded by a monthly premium uh, that you provide uh, in order to uh, support that facet. Uh, and it is uh, individual health insurance. So, uh, and we're going to go into, we're going to, I'm going to get into a little bit uh, greater fidelity on those things as well. So I talked about the, uh, the eligibility. Really what it comes down to is uh, if you reside in the United States or you are uh, a citizen of the United States for at least five years, um, then you, you need only to be age 65 or younger than 65 with a qualifying disability uh, or uh, any age with a, a diagnosis of uh, end stage renal disease or ALS, which is uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. So pretty basic uh, requirements for eligibility. 65 or older, um, live in the United States for at least three years, or, or at least five years, uh, pardon me. Um, so what does is, what is Medicare cover? I want to break it down and mention that original Medicare uh, comes in two parts. Uh, so the first part is uh, the coverage that covers your costs while you're in the hospital. So think that kind of uh, like rent. Uh, that's really, uh, it's, it's covering the institution, uh, the hospital room, uh, and the cost associated with uh, the rounding doctor and the nurses and so forth. And then part B is actually uh, the medical insurance that covers your visits to uh, your primary care physician and so forth. So, um, and we're going to go into greater detail on that. Uh, what does Medicare uh, Part A cover? Like I mentioned, your room and meals, the care and special units, any lab tests or x-rays that you have in there. Really, you know, one of the ever-present things that you see in the hospital while you're in the hospital is skilled nursing services. Uh, so um, you're, you're actually going to, um, that, that is actually a, a huge thing that, that the Part A pays for as well. So, and then anything, you know, if you had a, a minor procedure or, you know, a, 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 you know, anything that required you to uh, be in the surgical environment, the operating room, recovery room services, all those kinds of things that actually happen uh, in the hospital. So that is Part A. That is part A. Um, so it is, this is the big thing to remember about part A is whenever you received your paycheck, when you were in the workforce over the last umpteen many years, without question, you saw on there your uh, federal income um, tax withholdings and your, your Medicare costs as well. So if you were ever thinking, when am I ever going to use that benefit? Well, you're going to use it when you sign up for Medicare when you become eligible because it's those payroll taxes that you paid uh, over your time in the workforce that are supporting Part A, uh, which is the hospital insurance. Uh, and uh, we're also going to talk about some of the bullets here 
Um, but just remember, this is already paid for as long as you spent time in the workforce and the money was being deducted from your paycheck. Now there is a stipulation, a certain length of time that you needed to be in the workforce or you could incur a small cost, uh, but that's a rare uh, circumstance. I can certainly answer any of those questions offline if you have concerns about that. So part B, this is the medical insurance. So the first part A was for the hospital, part B, medical insurance, this is gonna cover your visits to your doctor. Um, and that includes if your doctor is rounding as a hospitalist and, and you know, maybe comes to your room where you're recovering, that will be covered uh, by your medical insurance. It's also going to uh, cover things like your, your preventive services, wellness visits, lab tests, any x-rays or T CT scans or any other diagnostic services you might need, um, help with stopping smoking, uh, physical therapy, and so forth. And then uh, very important to some folks, uh, this is the insurance that also covers durable med uh, medical equipment. So think oxygen and, and, and wheelchairs and so forth. And, and also if you needed to go to uh, a, uh, an emergency room or a urgent care center, Part B would take care of that as well. So Part A hospital, Part B doctor's visits, and in the environment outside the hospital with that one exception about rounding physicians. So uh, I mentioned before that part A is taken care of by your payroll taxes. Part B is actually supported by a monthly premium. So at the time you become eligible uh, for Medicare, you actually need to visit ssa.gov and enroll in part B. And once you do that, uh, you'll essentially start pay paying your monthly premium uh, for your Part B medical insurance. Uh, there is uh, potentially a, uh, a premium penalty uh, for late enrollment. Uh, if you have questions about that, I can certainly answer that for you. In some cases, it can be significant. So uh, if you have a concern about that, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, so we talked about gaps. Um, so I just described for you what Part A and Part B is. Um, but that doesn't cover everything, all right? Uh, there are out-of-pocket uh, costs associated with that. So uh, one of the things that people, uh, the first question they ask is, how do I pay for my prescription drugs? Well, we're gonna go into that uh, in just a few slides and also dental, vision, hearing care. Um, how do I have, uh, how do I order a new pair of glasses or how do I get a hearing exam and so forth? And, and what about custodial care? Or uh, if I need help after leaving the hospital with just uh, basic functions in my house and so forth. Well, there are gaps in Medicare um, where those things are not paid for. However, there are um, tools and plans in place uh, from a variety from all of the carriers that can to can fill those gaps for you. So and we're going to talk in detail about that. So what's the cost? We already talked about um, the fact that A is funded by your payroll taxes while you're in the workforce and B is covered by a monthly premium. So the first uh, line item in the cost is the premium, which is a fixed amount that you're going to pay for coverage usually monthly, there's other ways to pay it, but it's usually monthly and it's usually deducted from your social security uh, uh, benefit. A deductible is a set amount that's established by the carrier that you need to pay for services prior to uh, the benefits of the plan beginning. So it may be um, $500, you have to spend $500 uh, before the, the insurance carrier is going to start covering the cost of your care as expressed in the contract. The copay is a small amount that you pay at the time that you receive a covered service. If you've gone to the doctor before to your primary care physician or a specialist, it's, um, it's possible that you had to pay 10, 15, $20 uh, prior to uh, your appointment. And then lastly, coinsurance. This is essentially the cost share between the individual and the entity that is providing the coverage. And generally, uh, it comes down around 80-20, uh, meaning that the beneficiary, the patient, uh, foots 20% of the bill, whereas the, uh, 
um, the carrier uh, picks up the other 80%. So uh, wanted to provide, this is, a, this is probably uh, the most engaged uh, portion or the, the, the portion that generates the most interest for folks on part A. And essentially what we are uh, talking about here is the cost for a specific benefit period. And I'm actually gonna go uh, ahead uh, a slide because I wanna use the example because the, the previous slide doesn't apply those numbers to anything practical and, and it's kind of hard to follow. So this is part A, we're talking the hospital. So Matt is admitted to the hospital in January and he's there for five days, okay? So his first stay, as you can see, is um, uh, only five days long, days one through five, okay? He is going to, because that is a, a, a 60 day, uh, forgive me, I wanted to go back, a benefit period or broken down into 60 days. So he has started a new benefit period by entering the hospital for, for five days. The deductible for each benefit period is under original Medicare is $1,340, okay? So he stays there for five days and then he is released. And uh, he's readmitted 65 days later and he will have to again pay $1,340 because it's a new benefit period, all right? Um, so as you can see, he is going to be paying that deductible twice. And that is, that is the cost associated with an original Medicare situation, right? Um, days 61 through 65, he kind of jumps into the next tier of the next echelon, okay? At which point uh, Medicare stops paying all of the uh, costs for uh, the hospital, hospital environment. And he ends up having to pay $335 per day. And that will actually go on from the 61st day to the 90th day. So, but in this instance, it's only five days totaling uh, almost $1,700. So um, for uh, that amount of time, uh, the out-of-pocket cost for the beneficiary is gonna be just shy of 4,500 bucks. So um, that gets a lot of folks' attention. It, it's something, to, it's something uh, that we're gonna talk about how to mitigate some of those costs. So uh, Medicare Part B, there's, there's also a uh, cost example here. So um, if you go to see a Medicare provider, okay, a Medicare certified provider, someone who accepts Medicare in your local uh, community, you, you're generally speaking, you're going to uh, incur the costs that are listed uh, on the screen here. So- Okay, I got my phone. I'm sorry? I'm sorry. Okay. Did you have a question, ma'am? No? Okay. So um, the way Medicare works is it, basic Medicare is you, as long as you're seeing a Medicare approved provider, you're going to pay uh, generally less than someone who does not uh, who is not a Medicare uh, preferred provider. So uh, if you're on original Medicare, it's important that you give the provider's office a call, ask them if they do accept Medicare. And if they do, then it's likely that you're not gonna pay uh, quite, a, quite as much for the care that you get. So uh, as you can see under the accept, accepts assignment, um, it is considerably uh, less uh, what Ellen would actually pay, um, as you can see, she's going to end up paying 20% of the co-insurance, co uh, so a total of, of $44 specifically. So, so uh, how do you fill in those gaps? So we, we saw the pretty significant amount that you can uh, that you can end up paying for the hospital environment, and then also 
in the uh, in the outpatient environment. So there's a couple of things um, that are available. There's 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 a couple of products that are available that can significantly reduce that cost. Right. One of them is a supplement plan, which is a a, a plan that you purchase that is provides essentially wraparound services for the gaps that you have in um, in your part A and part B. And what this is going to do is uh, it will talk about this. It's going to pay down a lot of the out of pocket costs that come with original Medicare that we just that we just expressed some of those hospital costs and so forth. You can also add to your plan and you must add to your plan in some way, shape or form uh, a Part D plan or a prescription drug plan. Uh, when I say you must, if you want drug coverage, you're actually gonna have to purchase one of these and it helps pay for a portion, a significant portion of your drug plans. And then the other option is to purchase a Medicare Advantage plan, which usually includes a prescription drug plan and offers, pardon me, additional benefits that are generally not provided by original Medicare. So three things, your supplement, uh, Part D, as well as a Medicare Advantage plan. So Medicare Advantage plan, uh, it's, it's an alternative uh, to the original Medicare plan uh, and it essentially fills in the gaps and it's gonna provide uh, you with uh, uh, quite a few benefits that you wouldn't have in normal Medicare. Important to remember that Advantage plans are actually offered by private insurance companies. So this is not the federal government uh, administering this plan. So if you, uh, if you did enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan, that your relationship with your healthcare would generally be through a, a carrier like an Aetna or a Humana or United Healthcare. Uh, Medicare Advantage plans cover everything that you would get covered in Part A and Part B, uh, with the exception of hospice care, which is still and always covered by uh, original Medicare under your Part A. They'll also, as I mentioned, they'll also cover your prescription drugs, and many of them uh, in, in recent years have added uh, dental, vision, and hearing uh, to their plans, as well as wellness programs, which includes uh, gym memberships in some respects, also transportation to and from, uh, doctor's appointments, uh, meal assistance, and then uh, assistance with uh, over-the-counter products as well. So quarterly stipend for over-the-counter products. Medicare Advantage plans are extremely popular because of the scope of services they offer. Uh, so there, there's many types uh, there's types where you get assigned a, a, a primary care provider and uh, that primary care provider serves as uh, the primary steward of your health, health plan and helps direct your care plan. And then there's also others that offer uh, different interaction with your care team, uh, like a preferred provider, provider organization. I'm not going to go into specific detail on those, but I'm happy to answer questions offline on those. Um, Really, I would say uh, if I could underscore uh, one thing about the Medicare Advantage plan is that it is a very, it's a simplifying uh, plan that uses the strengths of the, medic, of the Part A and Part B and adds benefits to it to provide a more comprehensive plan uh, for the beneficiary. The important thing about uh, the Medicare Advantage plan is that you must continue to be enrolled in Part A and Part B uh, to participate in an Advantage plan. And also you must live in the plan service area, which is generally based on a zip code. So um, big takeaway here, remain enrolled in Part A, Part B, live in the service area, uh, and you, pay, you may have to pay a monthly premium and you'll have access to an, an Advantage plan. Now, prescription drug coverage uh, is, which are often included in Medicare Advantage plans, which would be called a MAPD, Medicare Advantage Prescription Drug Plan, uh, help with the cost of pres prescription drugs so that you're not paying retail uh, for the drugs when you go to the pharmacy. Many of the, the uh, carriers that provide prescription drug coverage 
uh, and, and offer prescription drug plans have large scale contracts with, with uh, pharmacies so they can offer uh, the prescriptions or the drugs at a much lower cost to the consumer. Uh, and they generally include, oh, they must include at least uh, the, the number of drugs on the, or, or the comprehensive list of drugs that are established by Medicare, uh, the prescription drug plans must at least include those, right? So they cannot offer less uh, than, than what uh, Medicare is offering as well. So, uh, so the drug costs are based on um, the, the, the cost of the drug starting at tier one and then um, going all the way up to tier five for very specialized drugs. I could, I could go on for quite some time about this. That's, that's not something uh, that I wanna do. I'm very happy to talk to you individuals about uh, what, specific, what specifically is going to be the cost for a, a drug of choice or a drug that you're, you're currently using. Um, and those are broken down into tiers and we can actually walk through, I can access all those drugs on various formulator, formularies through carriers or through CMS cms.gov and tell you exactly what the tier is and the anticipated cost of those is going to be. The big takeaway here is um, if you do take prescription medication, you really want to talk to an advisor or consultant and find out how much those drugs cost and whether or not they're available um, on the formulary of the carrier that you're considering purchasing. Um, the the donut hole ascent, this is uh, something that you've probably heard about uh, at length. And um, it's important uh, to understand that uh, there, this affects a very small amount of the population, right? Essentially, 10% uh, of the population uh, ever, it ever spends um, up to the coverage gap on, on their prescription drug plan. So it's, there's four phases in the, part, in the Part D coverage plan. The first one is an annual deductible. If your plan actually does have a deductible, we talked about that before. After you pay your deductible, then you're in the initial coverage phase. This covers 90% of people in either PDPs or Medicare Advantage plans. Uh, for the entire year and it resets every year. If you exceed the initial coverage stage, there will be a period of time between the catastrophic stage, the last stage, and the initial coverage uh, stage where you'll have to pay a cost share uh, for, the, uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the drug coverage. However, um, there are also uh, ways to mitigate the cost of this, but there are times during the life cycle of, of your uh, prescription plan that you will pay a little bit more uh, than you did uh, early in that if you fall into that category, meaning you take multiple costly medications that drive up the cost of your, of your annual uh, expenditure. Uh, so kind of uh, to, to button up the, prescription drug coverage, um, you've got to be enrolled uh, in Part B uh, in order to get uh, a prescription drug coverage. And the, the coverage and costs vary by plan and may change each year. So if you're currently in a plan, it's very good to do uh, a review of your benefit uh, with, an, with a licensed uh, agent to find out if you're actually uh, getting the coverage that you need, okay? Um, all right, so we talked about the supplement before. I mentioned that uh, there are specific plans um, that just fill in the gaps uh, between A and B. And there are actually 10 plans that are standardized by the federal government. And they're, they have a, uh, and they're designated by a letter, uh, A through, I think, uh, N right now. They're exactly the same, uh, no matter which carrier you buy them from. The only exception to that is if you were to purchase a 
plan in Massachusetts, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. And I don't think that that is relevant uh, to uh, our presentation today. But if you are in one of those states, there is going to be uh, something, there's going to be a minor deviation. This is a, uh, a very quick uh, graphical depiction of the supplement plans and exactly what they cover. So you can see down the left side, some of those things that we talked about costing you money uh, and could essentially aggregate to cost you quite a bit. If you buy a supplement plan, it pays um, for many of those gaps or many of those costs. So essentially what you do is in addition to your Part B premium, you elect to purchase a Medicare supplement plan and it will actually cover things like your co-insurance for up to 365 days in the hospital or your part, your part B deductible or the cost of foreign travel emergency or the co-insurance in a skilled nursing facility. So this think of a supplement as a way to knock down the costs of your standard Medicare plan. Uh, in summary, this is, this is uh, the supplement plans work with your part A and part B to close the gaps. And when we're talking about gaps, we're not talking about uh, gaps in uh, care here, but we're actually talking about um, some of the expenditures that can become uh, remarkable uh, during the course of a year. So you essentially exchange the being able to manage those mon monthly costs by paying for a supplement policy by month in addition to your Part B premium. So how do you choose? Well, there, there's essentially uh, seven different combinations that you can use. So you could actually stay with original Medicare or you could just add a Part D, a prescription drug plan. Uh, there's a lot of folks that do that. You could buy, as I just talked about, the supplement is, is highlighted in number three. You could add a medical supplement, a Medicare supplement to that as well to manage your costs. Uh, or you could go the route of the column on the right and you could purchase a Medicare Advantage plan, one that includes a prescription drug plan. Um, and that's gonna help you um, manage the cost of your prescriptions as well as uh, give you those services as I talked about, dental vision, hearing, gym membership, so forth. You can also uh, purchase a normal Medicare Advantage plan and add a prescription drug plan if you wanted. If you just wanted a standard Medicare Advantage plan, this is, um, that would mean that perhaps you have drug coverage from somewhere else. Let's say you're the member of a, of a labor union or, you have drug, you're still working and you have drug coverage from your company or you're a retired member of the armed forces and you get your, uh, your drugs from a, a military treatment facility pharmacy, you could purchase a standard Medicare Advantage plan and maintain your, uh, your benefit there. And, and therefore you, you were still getting your, your drugs from your original plan, but you had access to the dental vision and hearing, transportation, gym membership, and so forth. So, so there's, there's many different choices to consider. Um, and I know that this can sometimes be confusing for folks. And I know that after I, I gave this presentation last time, um, a couple of folks said, well, I'm really not clearer than I was before. Um, once they started showing the options, I, I really was not able to kind of wrap my my brain around that and figured figured out. Well, if that's the case for you, then I encourage you to, um, you know, just uh, let us know. We can make an appointment, and uh, we can go into specific details. I can provide you with consult and education on these things, and and really clear it up. And I can actually, you know, bust out the notebook and show you exactly, uh, you know, where the coverage gaps are what your concerns are, the kind of care that you want and so forth. So, okay. All right, so uh, honestly, when it comes to a supplement or a Medicare Advantage, uh, I, this is kind of the way I've, I've figured it out. 
and, and the the way I look at it is there there's there's pros and cons about each of them, um, but a Medicare supplement is really it's based. I think the strength of it is the convenience and the flexibility that you have with it. You can essentially go anywhere in the nation and you can see a provider. And as long as they accept Medicare, you can see that uh, you can see that provider and you're not going to have any additional out of pocket costs. All right. So the supplement takes care of that. Very flexible, very portable advantage. Um, is going to a Medicare Advantage plan, it is going to be, it may or may not charge you a monthly plan premium, but you're going to be assigned a, in most cases, a provider network or what some people would call now as, as your, your primary care physician or a medical home, some place that you go uh, to get your care initially. Um, when you think Medicare Advantage, Think of an all-in-one plan, uh, something that really fills in a lot of those cost gaps as well as provides additional services. So uh, if I was to ask someone, you know, what is your idea of retirement? And they said, well, I want to winter in um, or I want to summer in Minnesota and I and but keep my primary residence in Camel County or Kendall County then I would probably say to them, you know, a Medicare supplement's probably the best thing for you because even when you're back in uh, Minnesota, you're gonna be able to go to the doctor and you're not gonna get hit with an out of network cost or anything like that. If, if someone, you know, said the opposite, no, I'm pretty much a homebody, I stay right here in Spring Branch. And uh, my idea of, of a, a vacation is a, is a long drive up to Johnson City or maybe we we head down to Corpus Christi, you know, a couple of weekends a year. Then I would say, well, you may want to consider a, a Medicare Advantage plan because that's going to give you a very good, comprehensive level of coverage, um, and it's very good for folks that kind of stay close to home and want to manage their costs and don't want to pay an additional monthly premium, uh, a large monthly premium for for their care. So we're actually in. Uh, what you would call uh, the annual election period, the annual enrollment period, open enrollment. It's, it's called many things by many different names, uh, but essentially uh, this is the big one. So 15 October through 7 December Pearl Harbor Day, um, this is when you can enroll. However, if this is the first time that you're enrolling, it's, it's, you can actually enroll three months prior to earn, turning 65 or, or after receiving your social security disability benefits for 24 months, which means you may be younger than 65, then you have your birth month and then three months after. So you essentially have seven months uh, to sign up for Medicare, uh, which is a pretty wide window to be able to do that. The next enrollment period is the general enrollment period. Uh, and this is for folks who might have missed their initial enrollment period. So you can enroll in your parts A and B in uh, January through March, and you can enroll in an Advantage plan or prescription drug plan uh, April uh, through June. Uh, there may be some late enrollment penalties because you missed your initial enrollment uh, period. If you have any questions about that seven month window for your initial enrollment period, uh, please ask uh, and we can answer those questions to ensure you don't incur uh, an unnecessary penalty. Okay, so MedSup uh, open enrollment. So the supplement we talked about, that, that great flexible plan that you get if you spend six months a year in Minnesota or Michigan or something like that, uh, is your, your actual uh, birth month and then uh, up to six months after the month you turn 65 or older and enrolled in Part B. And what that would mean is uh, perhaps you uh, were still working and you were covered by your employee's group health plan, uh, which you wouldn't need to uh, sign up for Part B yet. Uh, and you still have uh, coverage through your employer. Um, one important thing about a, a Medicare uh, supplement is if you do not um, sign up for a supplement in the first 
in your first six months after you're eligible, you may um, not qualify for a plan or have to um, uh, receive a physical or answer medically related questions and the carrier will actually do an analysis to decide uh, if they wanna provide coverage or charge you a greater premium based on your health history. So uh, you can sign up for that MedSup during your initial uh, eligibility period, which is when you turn 65 or you start your Part B and you will not endure medical underwriting or you will not have a medical review. But if you go beyond that six months, you will be subject to that. Uh, special enrollment period, uh, this could be uh, the last month after you were employed, as I just mentioned. So if you worked here um, 67 and the last month of your employment was June, uh, then the month after your last month of employment and your employee health coverage, uh, that begins your special enrollment period. All right. And then it's a it's the it's the same the month after your last employment month for parts C and D, but it only lasts for two months. All right. Again, if you have specific questions about this, we can answer those for you. So there are uh, there are potentially um, a premium penalties for uh, late enrollment, uh, late enrollment, uh, but for most people under Part A, if you were qualified based on your work history, then you're not gonna be subject to a late enrollment penalty. If you're only partially qualified because your work work penalty, your work history, you could incur a 10% penalty. The most common uh, form of penalty actually is the penalty if associated with not having any uh, creditable drug coverage. So if you go without drug coverage, uh, for 63 days or more, it is possible that you could uh, be subject to a nominal um, uh, premium penalty for not having drug coverage. There's also one for Part B, um, and that's the one that can be quite costly, uh, and it's a little bit more complex. So if you have questions about your Part B enrollment, whether or not you're going to be subject to a, a penalty, please um, ask that question at the end of the brief. Um, or uh, set up a time and we can discuss it specifically. So when can you change your coverage? Well, you can change it right now if you're already enrolled in a plan. You can switch from Part A and Part B original Medicare to an Advantage van, uh, plan or vice versa. Uh, you can switch from one Medicare Advantage plan to another. So if you didn't care for one carrier and you wanted to go to another, now's the time you can do that as well. Um, and then you can you can add you can move to a new Medicare prescription drug plan, or um, uh, join one for the first time during this time frame as well. Supplements are not affected by this. You can actually enroll in a supplement anytime during the year. Uh, the important thing to remember was the medical underwriting that I was talking about. If it's if you're going to be changing plans, uh, and then also ensuring that you're disenrolled from one plan in a timely manner with your enrollment and the other one so you're not double paying for a premium. Uh, there's many things that would qualify for a special enrollment period. You could have lost creditable drug coverage and need to, to get a prescription drug plan. Your COBRA could expire from um, your retiree transition. Uh, you could move back to the U.S. if you were living abroad or something like that. Uh, or you could just be moving out of the planned service area. We have a lot of beneficiaries that are moving to the Bernie area, Spring Branch, Bulverde, so forth from California. And they need, they need new coverage when they get here. So uh, those are some of the special enrollment periods. Um, I mentioned before, uh, how do you save money on these plans? Well, the... At, at, the, at the basic level, it's, this is a lot of the stuff that we all already know. Um, using preventive services and going for those, those annual preventive uh, exams and so forth that don't cost you anything. Staying in your provider network if you're in an Advantage plan. Uh, going outside your network and a provider that does not accept that uh, carrier is gonna cost you extra. Uh, using generic drugs uh, when available and um, trying to use uh, uh, 
therapeutic drugs that are assigned lower tiers, as we talked about before, those are going to cost less. And then also using, uh, getting larger quantities of, of your drugs through the mail uh, generally costs less as well in the aggregate and then um, end up costing you less per annum on an annual basis. And then uh, understanding uh, your status in the hospital. We talked about those, those benefit periods and so forth. So um, uh, those can, that can really matter uh, when, it, when you're, when you might be being readmitted to the hospital, whether or not you're going to be subject to another deductible and so forth. So, um, and then also working with your provider team uh, and your, your carrier will, will most likely do this as well. They'll pay very close attention to the time spent in the hospital versus a, a nursing care, or a long-term or a rehab facility. So uh, a lot less expensive to stay in one of those than it is in the hospital. So uh, each state uh, administers the health insurance plan and um, you can contact uh, any of the, the uh, uh, any of your states to get uh, questions answered on extra help with your prescription drugs, whether or not you're eligible for uh, Medicaid, uh, also Medicare savings programs to help pay uh, your, your Part B premium um, and then your Part A if, if applicable and then uh, programs focus specifically on uh, folks that are frail uh, and living, uh, frail uh, elderly folks living in the community. There are some extra, there is some extra help with that as well. So, um, so where can you go for help? Well, uh, obviously the Medicare Made Clear uh, presentation that we provided today is supposed to demystify some of that. Uh, we are also available uh, as an adjunct to help answer questions immediately after this um, based on the content that you saw here if you didn't understand something. Uh, you can also go to uh, uh, United Healthcare specifically for um, their newsletter that gives you uh, applicable uh, and up-to-date information about Medicare. And this is without a, um, a specific bias towards one carrier or the other. Um, and then also we'll be sending out this brief afterwards uh, and providing that to everyone. So if you have questions, you can, you can kind of circle those and come back and ask us. More resources are available at medicare.gov. Uh, that's actually a really good site. Very, um, one of the things I do like to mention here is you don't sign up for Medicare um, at medicare.gov for your Part B. You actually sign up at the ssa.gov. So if you don't already have a social security account established, please take the time to, uh, to do that as well. So um, that is it.